So the design I've drawn up here, or attempted to draw up here, is a, it's a rather simple design that a lot of people in a high school physics class might recognize. I made one, actually, back in ninth grade physics. But one of the devices I've shown you here is a mousetrap car. Uh, you know, we all, we all sort of recognize it. You know, you have a little stick at the bottom, uh, at the attached to the mousetrap itself. When it's released, it's this. Uh, the stick pulls a string. It pulls a wheel and act that pulls a wheel and axle that causes the car to move forward. We all you kind of understand that from a very basic level, but then one of the things here that I figured I might as well do is overcomplicate the or explain sort of what's happening at the step of the process here to maybe have a larger thing to say here so basically what's really happening here and what the master car really is in my eyes is the one of the most perfect versions of energy transfer uh we rely on energy transfer for doing just about anything really so uh if take for instance we have the mousetrap card here so what we have first here is we have ourselves the beginning of all the energy here is going to be the uh elastic potential energy which is going to be represented through this which is going to be in physics is represented through the symbol of u uh equaling one over two times k the spring constant times delta that's going to be uh i've heard of, i've seen it say x squared delta x so squared, which is going to be the square of the, a change in position. If you don't know what k is, k, the spring constant, according to Hooke's law, is going to be equal to the, I believe it is the force that the exerted upon the string, or that's going to be a compressing the string, divided by the distance. Rex. So this is how we sort of start with here. We take some elastic potential energy, the stored energy here, and what we're doing here is we're trying to, I guess, transfer it uh, over to the stick. So when we're transferring it to from the actual, so when we're basically, when you're releasing it, you're transferring it over to the stick. That's going to be converting it into uh, some form of kinetic energy, uh, I suppose. Kinetic or maybe mechanical energy. It's going to be some form of it. Uh, kinetic energy referring to energy that is in motion. So... Uh, let's say the kinetic energy of the stick itself. Uh, the kinetic energy stick, if you don't know, it's going to be equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. That's a pretty, that's a pretty formula for it. Too. And then you get into the whole idea of uh, simple machines, where the because it's transferred to the stick, the string on the stick, that's causing it to pull an axle and then the axe and then from here it's converted into rotational motion uh and then the what the wheel and axle will actually do it does is the axle transfers the energy from the axle to the wheel then the wheel transfers the energy from the axle to linear energy and then the conversion of rotational to linear energy is quite simple really it's really just a uh, it's actually quite simple it just needs that a uh, linear velocity for example a v is going to be equal to Rotational velocity times the radius of it, times the radius of the wheel. Now then, that might be sort of almost the end of the story, but I did say it was a perfect, this entire thing was sort of a perfect example of energy transference. And this is because, this is really just an excuse for me to talk about, really, that this type of stuff happens in our day-to-day -day lives all the time. Let me just add that there. Uh, this sort of idea of um, energy transference is very is prevalent in all aspects of our life, really. Uh, so if we were to instead of take like we were to move away from this idea of a mousetrap car who is that's trying to transfer the energy of elastic potential energy, converting it ultimately into linear kinetic energy, that like through a variety of simple machines, like this is entire thing. Uh, you could and when I really call it a lever because it's in that, because there isn't a fulcrum here, but uh, I mean I guess you could argue the fulcrum is gonna be right at the spring itself, so maybe, but uh, you could argue this too. But then I'd like to actually point out something else, which is used much more heavily, and that is going to be in the form of our good old, in the form of power generation. If you don't know, then pretty much all power generation is formed from heat itself. Uh, that's a nice little fire. Yeah, it's fire. So it's always going to be formed from heat. 
you don't know, if, uh, for reference here, I guess I can't read that one. For reference here, basically, anytime you really get some sort of a, ener anytime you produce any form of energy for use of uh, turn on the light bulb or anything, this is all going to be from heat. This is all going to be done usually through, this is going to be a general process you're going to have. So, first you have the heat itself. The heat is going to be generated through, uh, in a coal fire plant, you're going to be, gener it's going to be through combustion, which is really, which combustion is really just the release of, uh, thermal energy from the, you know, like, yeah, combustion is really just the release of thermal energy, which is, you know, an exothermic reaction, which is really just a question of chemical potential energy. So what combustion is, it's a conversion of chemical potential energy to heat. And then, but then what we need this heat to do is we need it to heat up some, a small little body of water. And then when it heats up this body of water and then turns into little gas bubbles, the uh, bo the water turns into steam. Then when the steam, and then the steam, we can force it through a little pipe. Then the steam in the pipe, like is then like we force it through there, builds a pressure here, and from here we basically convert it into mechanical energy. Mechanical energy being an energy of, of you know motion sort of almost. You know? So from here we've converted the thermal energy to mechanical energy, and then we want to convert the mechanical energy to kinetic energy through the use of our, to the use of a turbine. Okay. Uh, yep. Here's a little turbine here. We convert that into the use of a turbine, and so then because of and so then because of all that, uh, after it is converted through a turbine, we then end up trying. After this, it spins, the turbine spins, because the turbine, that's converted into kinetic energy, and then at last, you can then, like then, according to, you have one of Faraday's laws, is going to actually state that you can actually, through the use of a moving a little, a magnet, the turbine's actually going to be moving a magnet through a coil of wire, uh, very commonly, and so because of that, uh, yep. so, then it, yeah, so, it's going to be moving it through our little coil of wire. I'm going to say right... That's a coil of wire. It's moving it through a coil of wire, and that produces electricity. That's a lightning bolt. That's a good lightning bolt, I think. Uh, no, so then, after we get this electricity, then... Uh, something that's really uh, weird to think about is that... The reason that everything is powered through electricity is just that electricity just so happens to be a form of energy that is extremely easy to transfer into other forms. So, like, we can take electricity, and then if you push it through a... If you take electricity and push it through a coil, a coil of wire, you can use, you can convert the electricity into thermal and heat energy, which is how we get our... Which is how we actually get ourselves the light bulb, or the traditional filament-based light bulb... That's how we get ourselves the traditional filament-based light bulb. Uh, you can also alternatively use a fluorescent light bulb when you pass electricity through some gases. It'll cause some luminescence, thus just creating ourselves the fluorescent light bulb. Uh, then alternatively, you can also say you want to create a speaker. You and you turn on the speaker when you try to push energy into the speaker. The speaker will convert that energy electricity into mechanical energy. You know, and mechanical ener and sound waves are really just another expression of that mechanical energy in the form of vibrations. Uh, this is how we can you know hook up electricity to more lights. You can actually get uh, images along with sound, you know, television or stereo, if you will. If so. Uh, ultimately, uh, like, so ultimately, we can see here that uh, this is a basically a very. This video isn't really mathematics heavy like my other videos are. Uh, maybe that's because uh, right now I'm just a little tired. I guess right now I'll hope to come up with like a calculus video soon. This one's more or less just uh, how should just say a very much a very uh, an ex a day a dive into some ideas of physics here, a little bit more dive into some physics here, these equations here, uh, they can be, you can actually use these here, uh, some, uh, interesting things you can do here, that if you figure out the, uh, if you actually did figure out the, uh, little, uh, our u value right here, you know, that's not that difficult to calculate when you have the spring itself, 
then all you'd act then you could actually calculate out then the kinetic energy at the end and then a little fun thing you could do is figuring out uh, where the energy itself has been lost. Uh, energy is going to primarily be lost. Uh, it's going to be primarily lost at the axle when it spit when it pivots because it's going to be some of it's going to be turned into fr converted into friction, the heat energy through friction. Uh, you're kind of a very small portion that is going to go into for entropy or the uh, amount of work or the energy has become unavailable energy or energy that is no longer capable of doing work. Uh, Although that might be something that I will want, although entropy is a topic that's big enough to, to warrant uh, several videos made by more qualified people than me, but I still want to talk about it because I, it's one of those things that just fascinates me. So that's uh, that's all for the day, folks. Hope you enjoyed.